Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmaurice, and this video is an introduction to angular momentum. So by the end of this video, you should be able to define and calculate angular momentum. You should be able to explain when angular momentum is conserved, and you will see an angular momentum example problem, and you will be asked to try one by yourself. Alright, so angular momentum is kind of a continuation of the idea that anything you can talk about um, translationally, that's side to side or up and down, you can talk about in terms of rotation. So our normal or our translational version of momentum is P equals MV. Okay, and the idea behind normal momentum is it's how hard it is to stop an object. And just like before, okay, if we want the angular quantity, we're going to replace m with i, and we're going to re replace v with omega. Okay, so this angular momentum is going to be equal to i omega, and the symbol for angular momentum is L. So L is our angular momentum. It's a, always a capital L. I is, of course, our moment of inertia. Or our angular inertia. Or our rotational inertia, whatever you want to call it. And omega is our angular velocity. So let's take a second to think about the units. We know that I is in the units of kilograms times meters squared, and omega is in the units of radians, which is our ma magical disappearing unit. Okay, so we have kilograms meters squared per second so angular momentum, kind of like normal momentum, is something without its own unit, and it has the unit of kilograms meters squared per second. Okay, so just like normal momentum, angular momentum is sometimes conserved. And so it's really important to be able to recognize situations in which angular momentum is conserved. Um, so, normal momentum, sigma p naught equals sigma p, okay, so normal momentum is conserved when there's no net outside force, okay, you can probably guess what I'm going to replace force with, angular momentum is conserved, so sigma L naught, okay, all of the angular momentum at the beginning is equal to all the angular momentum at the end when there's no net external or outside torque. And so, kind of true to fashion, we were just replacing force with torque. Alright, so here's my example. We have a kid and they're standing on one of these like playground merry-go-rounds. Um, we have, the kid has a mass of 50 kilograms, so I guess it's not a very small kid, and the merry-go-round has a mass of 100 kilograms. Okay, you can see the merry-go-round, let's say it's a perfect disc. It has a radius of 2 meters, and it's initially um, rotating with an angular velocity of 2 radians per second. And my question is, what is going to happen to the speed 
if the kid walks, the kid was initially standing at the middle, this kid has a very long neck, and the kid walks to a place, so they're only one meter from the center, okay, what will be their new angular velocity? Okay, and if the kid is walking inwards, okay, they are not, they are first of all exerting a force towards the center of the merry-go-round, okay, so that force won't contribute to torque because the angle between the radius, the center where this thing is spinning, and the force that the kid's putting on it is 180. Okay, but it's also an internal force, the kid walking towards the center. Okay, so because there's no net external torque, we know that it's true that sigma L naught equals sigma L. Okay, so angular momentum is conserved. Now I need to be able to calculate the angular momentum at the beginning and the angular momentum at the end. Okay, so I'm going to break it down and I'm, I'm going to say L or angular momentum of the merry-go-round initial plus angular momentum of the kid initial has to be equal to angular momentum of the merry-go-round at the end plus angular momentum of the kid at the end. Okay, and I know that each L is I omega, so I have I of the merry-go-round omega naught plus I of the kid omega naught equals I merry-go-round omega final plus I kid omega final. Um, because these two things, okay, the kid and the merry-go-round are spinning together, while the angular momentum or the angular velocity at the end is not going to be equal to the angular momentum at the beginning, the kid who is staying on the merry-go-round the whole time will be going the same angular velocity as the merry-go-round. Okay, so I'm actually going to factor my omegas out. Okay, and I'm going to bring this down here. I have, um, and I'm going to put knots on my angular inertia too. So I have omega naught which we know is 2 radians per second, times I of the merry-go-round plus I of the kid is equal to my final omega plus times I of the merry-go-round plus I of the kid. And these should have initials on them. Okay. We know that for a disk, okay, the merry-go-round is a disk, and the inertia of a disk, if I went back and I looked at my chart of inertias, is one-half mr squared. So it's im is equal to one-half mm r squared. And so I'm going to put that in. Now the disk, its mass distribution doesn't change. So I'm going to fill that in. And I should have written an I here, not an M. I'm going to fill that in two times. Okay, so I have omega naught. And for I M, I'm going to put one half M M, the mass of the merry-go-round, R squared. Okay, and at the end, I'm going to do the same thing. One half m m r squared. Now, the kid does change position. 
And we can think of the kid, and this might be a little weird to do, but we're going to think of the kid as a point mass, okay, with a mass of 50 kilograms. So if they are two meters away from the center, then their angular inertia will be their mass, m kid, r squared. Okay, at the end, they are still, we're still treating them like a point mass, but their new radius is r over 2 because they walked um, half of the way in. So their new inertia will be mk r over 2 squared. Notice that I'm holding off on plugging in any numbers. Okay, so I really encourage you to do that when you're dealing with rotational problems. Um, I know that I'm solving for this omega at the end. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by this thing I'm underlining right now. And I have omega naught. one half mm r squared and actually I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to factor out the r squared so I have r squared plus mk okay and I'm going to divide by Notice I can also factor out an r squared, r squared, one half mm plus mk r squared over 2, r over 2 squared will be mk over 4 equals omega. I'm going to take this and bring it to the next page. But before I do, notice that my R's cancel out. Now I have omega naught times this kind of group of masses. I know my initial angular velocity, if we look back, was 2 radians per second. We know the mass of the merry-go-round was 100 kilograms, so I have 100 over 2, which is 50. Um, the mass of the kid was also 50. And then I have mm over 2, so that's 50 again, plus mk over 4, which is 12.5. So at the end, I have our omega is 2 times 100 divided by 62.5 okay and you get 3.07 radians per second now if you have 3.07 compared to 2 the thing sped up okay and what the kid basically did when they moved in towards the center of the merry-go-round is they reduced the total I. Okay, they reduced the total moment of inertia. And if you reduce the total moment of inertia, you have to increase omega. Alright, so I'm going to leave you with this question. The Earth travels around the sun, not in a perfect circle, but in kind of an egg-shaped elliptical pattern. And my question is, as Earth is traveling around the sun, is the Earth's angular momentum conserved? I want you to take a minute, pause the video, and just try to answer that question for yourself. Should the angular momentum of the Earth be conserved? Um, is it the same when the Earth is here 
versus when it comes over here versus when it comes over here. And, you know, the the um, speed of the Earth is definitely changing because its potential energy is changing. But I want you to decide whether its angular momentum is conserved. Okay, so hopefully you've decided for yourself. Um, the answer is yes. Okay, because everywhere the Earth is, the Sun is pulling it towards the center. Okay, it's pulling towards the center. It's being pulled towards the center. Okay, so first of all, if we look at Earth and the Sun as a system, then gravity is an internal force. And so, even if it did create a torque, it would be an internal torque, and the momentum of the system would be conserved. But second, if you look at the direction of the force, and we think about torque, the sun is the center, radius is always in the same direction. Okay, so we have the radius, the radius, the radius, and if we were to calculate the torque using torque equals fr sine theta, your angle would always be zero. And hopefully you know that sine of zero equals zero, so what that means is that torque equals zero, and angular momentum is conserved.